Nothing might be holding you back. It might just be that you're allergic to change. The one constant in your life, so the saying goes, is change. The tide of events that append your status quo can seldom be stopped, no matter how much you want your convenient conditions to remain the same. Have you ever attempted to make a positive change in your life, but were thwarted by your own self-defeating habits? Perhaps you made the decision to start working out, eating better, or sleeping better, but you were pushed to make decisions that prevented you from achieving your objectives. Maybe you put off or postponed actions you knew would improve your life until you were stuck, gave up, or felt the need to take a break. This is resisting change. But before we go into this video, please be sure to subscribe to my channel and press the notification button so you get notified when I post a new video. How do we resist change? When we see life from a dualistic perspective, we believe we are distinct from it. I have a dualistic perspective on life if I perceive myself as a separate entity from the other people or things around me. Since I don't believe in dualism, I can see how closely connected everything I encounter is to myself. We pass judgment on events because dualistic thinking makes us assume we are different from our surroundings. If we evaluate our experience negatively, we are more likely to oppose it. The problem is that we fight against not just our external experiences, but also our internal ones. We fight against change. Change always comes with some resistance. Whether our intended change is little, like drinking an additional glass of water in the morning, or significant, we will likely encounter this difficulty like quitting smoking or starting a new job. Why do we resist? There are two main reasons why we resist change. We are afraid of change or scared of failing. Let me explain better. 1. Fear of Failure Our ego essentially seeks to keep us safe at all costs, and that's not necessarily a negative thing, but sometimes we require its circumspect cautions. Moreover, the ego views being out there in the world as the riskiest possible situation since it exposes you to the chance of failure. When you take on the mindset of change, negative thoughts begin to seep in, such as, what if I fail? What if it doesn't work? What if they don't see things the way I see it? Two. The things we value most are subject to greater risk. There is more to lose when it comes to the things we truly love. We elevate the importance of the things we cherish and inflate the risks to the point that even the smallest step toward our objectives becomes scary. We sometimes resist change, especially if it involves something we really love. Ways to overcome your resistance to change 1. Find out what's preventing you. Examine where you feel stuck and what keeps you from acting in order to spot resistance to change. The first step to overcoming resistance is to first search deep within yourself and find that idea or thing that's preventing change. You can ask yourself the following questions. 1. What idea crossed my head when I consider taking an important action in my life? 2. How can I handle or completely prevent that worst case scenario? 3. What would be the worst scenario if I overcame my aversion and took action? 4. What makes me hesitant to begin? 2. Take on learning mentality. Everything is in flux. One of the few realities we can depend on to endure is that reality cannot be resisted. Only transformation can. How can you make friends with this reality rather than striving so hard to maintain things the same? A surfer will fall if they become tight while riding a wave. A leader fails when they become uptight while adjusting to change. Describe your goal, adopt a growth mentality in every circumstance, adapt, enjoy. Don't forget that learning doesn't come easily there will surely be difficulty along the way. If the prospect of a bad outcome is too much for you to bear, consider phrasing the issue differently. Choose an alternative angle from which to see your problem, in other words, learn along the way. 3. Recognize that failure is not a given. Make it clear to your mind that failure is not a given. Exposing your mind to fresh ideas is one of the finest ways to do this. You may achieve this by reading, listening to and observing other individuals who are in comparable circumstances discuss their path to success. Fear is the root of resistance, and for many people, change is the source of fear. Some people could be afraid of the unknown or of reliving a bad event. We employ resistance to defend ourselves, yet it restricts who we are and what we may experience. Try viewing change as the very thing that opens the door to your next opportunity rather than the constraints and dangers that come with it. Do away with your fears. Failure should not mean you should give up. Instead, you should stand up stronger than before. Failure is a part of success, and don't forget that. 4. Create Certainty We previously discussed people's fear of the unknown and the uncertainty around improving your life. 
you're about to learn how to combat any anxiety brought on by uncertainty. You need to create assurance if you don't want ambiguity to immobilize you. You will gradually eliminate the uncertainty as you take the time to prepare and comprehend the change you want to make in your life. As you learn more, your confidence in your capacity to negotiate the challenging terrain of transforming your life will grow. Try telling someone you trust about your plans. When you build a network of support around your objective, this will lessen symptoms of opposition. 5. Keep a success journal If you want to get over your reluctance to change, you should work on enhancing your view of both the process and of yourself. You may question your ability to successfully transform your life when faced with a new circumstance. You must keep a success diary if you want to swiftly get through this challenge and preserve a good outlook on yourself. It's important for you to track your progress. Record all of your accomplishments in your success notebook. Read a few pages from your journal when you start to question your abilities to successfully transform your life. You'll rapidly regain the right perspective and see that you possess the necessary skills to accomplish your objectives. 6. Have a support system It's beneficial to have someone hold you accountable and remind you to take the essential steps to reach your goal. If the problem is serious enough, it may be a friend, a member of the family, or even a coach or therapist. Therefore, try completing this procedure by yourself first before enlisting others. Remember that you're not alone. Remember that many others don't have to adhere to the same routines as you do if you feel trapped. They can demonstrate how to overcome change-related reluctance. Change may be challenging, as we're all aware. It might be tempting to try to handle opposition in our own when it arises. Nonetheless, drawing on other people's transitional experiences may be quite helpful. Decide who your support network will be before you get started. It might be a reliable buddy over a colleague, an online community, or a physical team. Make use of this network of friends to discuss your problems, come up with ideas, and get insight. 7. Take baby steps Sometimes we strive to drastically alter our life, but that is impossible. Instead, you should start with the smallest possible step and work your way up. By doing this, you can prevent overpowering feelings of worry, which frequently result in procrastination or giving up. Here's how to go about it. Choose a situation in your life where you'd like improvements, like relationships with friends, work performance. Create a list of the exact steps you need to do in this regard. Give up your whining. Specify completion dates for these tasks. Daily update the action plans for their progress. Learning how to handle resistance within yourself is not easy, but it's worth it. What stands in the way of experiencing inner peace is not honoring the message that our hearts are giving us. In fact, many of our mental and physical disorders are due to creating resistance within ourselves. Given all that I've said so far, one thing deserves mentioning. There is nothing in life that has an inherent meaning to it. Rather, it is our minds that create the meaning of our experiences. When we experience resistance, we're not resisting the situation. Rather, we're resistant to our perception of it.